The design of the house is very thought out. You really have to make every single use of square inch that you have. We knew that it was going to be sitting on this property. We sited it so that it's south facing, which allows for passive heating and cooling. So the main living space, which is the great room and the deck, is all facing south. It has most continuous lighting throughout the day, but you don't have direct um, heat gain. The outside of the house is all cedar. It's a western red cedar. It's resistant to rot and weathers very well. There's a rain screen underneath the cedar. The corners are mitered and glued together. No seams, it's very clean, very smooth. And no trim around the windows meant, meant that it had to be a very perfect fit. It's a mobile structure that has wheels that allows you to go from one place to another. It's probably 10,000 pounds, maybe plus. We didn't weigh it yet, but judging by how it pulls on a large truck, uh, I'd say it's up there. The deck doubles my square footage. It's um, a lot of my living space for dining and just entertaining. The great room functions as, as a media room, as an office space, as a guest bedroom, as a library. My office has a little storage unit that has a portable coffee table slash storage slash um, dining table. It can move around because of the casters. Believe it or not, my kitchen is the biggest kitchen I've ever had in any of the guest houses I've rented pretty much throughout my adult life, which is really crazy. One of the tricks about the kitchen is light and storage. So for instance, my stove has a horizontal window that frames the view outside, yet it has storage above. So having completely open shelving really helps. My sink is really functional. It has a deep basin as well as a high gooseneck, so I can put tons of dishes and pots and pans in there. It's a gray water system that recycles all my water, feeds my grapefruit tree. A year ago when I moved in, it was completely lifeless, and now it's just in full glory with grapefruit. So just because I'm tiny doesn't mean I don't go big. Some of my luxury items in my tiny house is the propane gas fireplace. It's pretty sweet. Another item is my skylight loft. It's actually half as long as my entire trailer. It's 10 feet long. And so there's a lot of space up here which people don't realize until they're up here. It's one of my dream parts of my house that I could be able to watch the birds sing and look at the stars at night and almost feel like I'm camping. It's pretty special. I think people are surprised that my tiny house is actually my forever home because I see it as a place where I can actually take root in, which is unusual because all my life I've never felt rooted anywhere. I'm from the Philippines. I was born there and I'm one of nine children. And we lived in a very modest um, lifestyle because we didn't have much money at all. And when I came here, I basically, you know, just learned to live pretty simply and minimally. When you think about your daily life, having to go to work every day and then making the money to just support your lifestyle of, you know, your big house. And really, what is how much time do you really spend with your family? Quality time, not cleaning out the garage. Ojai is definitely a place I can call home. You know, when I built my house, it was really just for myself, and so I didn't think of it as any major, you know, explosion that was going to happen for other people. When somebody told me I should put it on house, I, I just uploaded some photos, and then immediately, soon after, I had all these responses, and it just exploded. Most people think of a home as something to be rooted in, but the tiny house allows you to have that flexibility and still be grounded. And I think that's, that's an amazing thing.